It's Christmas! We've teamed up with Tesco to bring you some delicious and simple festive food ideas. From seasonal party food to how to cook a full-blown Christmas dinner, desserts, and even what to do with your leftovers. All of which will get your Christmas sorted. Desserts! Why is it that no matter how much Christmas dinner you eat, there's always still room for pudding? It's because they're very tempting and this year we've got three alternatives for you. That is correct. We are making a pear and cranberry ginger nut crumble. A mince pie ice cream. But first up, we're making a mulled wine trifle. Let's do it. So the thing with trifle is all about different layers. Like we need onions. To, like onions, but with fewer tears. So what we need to do is start... I guess so. So what we need to do do is start off with a jelly. We're going to make ours from mulled wine, so 500ml of mulled wine. Yes. If you can just warm that up to a mull, because at the moment it's cold wine, not mulled wine. I think you need the hob. Right. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm going to take a few sheets of gelatine and soak them in cold water. And then, instead of soaking the jelly over sponge, we're going to rip up some finest panettone and put that in the bottom of our bowl. Now, the best way to do this is rip big chunks into the bottom of the trifle dish. And then we'll get our mulled wine, which should be nice and steaming. And our mm -hmm. gelatin now, we can squeeze out any excess water. The mulled wines are going to pour over our panettone bread. Half of it now, and it will soak in. And then put that into the fridge, leave this out of the fridge. And in about an hour's time, you can pour the rest of the jelly over the top of that so you get a layer with sponge and a layer without the rest of the panettone bread. Make a bread and butter pudding. And there we go, the jelly is set. So, next up, we're going to place vanilla custard all over there. So just pre-bought, it's a bit of a cheat. And then Jay, do you want to grab the cherry jam? Yes. Because this isn't any old custard, we're going to make cherry rippled custard. So if you kind of just stir that up and put blobs into our custard. Yeah. And if you just kind of run a fork, a knife, a spoon, whatever you like, through our jam. And then for the next layer, all we're going to do is whip up double cream with a tablespoon of caster sugar or so, and toast off a few of our whole almonds in the process. Now the thing with trifle is all about layers and at Christmas yeah. we're not skimping on flavours. So next up chocolate plus some of these really sticky glacé Morello cherries. I'm just going nice. to drop some of those in there as well. Is it a black forest trifle? Yeah, no, with mulled wine. And with the cream done, now it's just necessary to finish it off with everything else. So more chocolate, more cherries Jamie. Yep. And I'll grab those almonds oh, yeah. and if you want a sprig of mint on top as well. Optional. Jamie, can I have a cherry? Of course. <laughs> and that is our mulled wine trifle sorted. Now, I think it's fair to say you've heard of mince pie with ice cream, but have you heard of ice cream with mince pies in it? Well, you have now. So, all you need to do is grab yourself some fresh vanilla custard and go for the good quality stuff, and it has to be the fresh one, not a carton or a tin. They don't churn as well and make as good ice cream. Oh, okay. So, go for fresh custard, and then basically just put that into a bowl, and then an optional splash of brandy. Now, this bit you can leave out if you don't like brandy, but, I mean, you'd be a fool not to, wouldn't you, really? Well, you can, you can leave it out, or you can mix it up. You can go for a Baileys, you can go Ooh. for more of a cream liqueur, if you want. And now for the mince pie part of our mince pie ice cream. So we've got two finest mince pies. All I'm going to do is just take the lid off, mm -hmm. because at this stage, all we want is that filling. We're not going to waste anything, but all that pastry goes in when it's almost set later on. So give it a good mix up, put this into a freezer, and it'll need a good couple of hours to freeze up, but take it out and whisk it with either a whisk or a fork every 20 minutes or so, and that'll help to stop too many large ice crystals forming, which will make it a nice smooth ice cream to ball later on. With the ice cream almost frozen, you can see it's sort of frozen mm. around the edges, mm -hmm. now we can break in our pastry from the mince pies. So, so if you just crumble those why, in. Why now and not earlier? Uh, it holds it in suspension. If it's too liquid, it all just sinks to the bottom. Oh, cool. Okay, well, it's here, some of it will hold. We're going to hold one lid back to crumble over ice cream later on as a bit of a garnish. Leave it chunky? Leave it really chunky. It's a bit like cookie dough ice cream in that sense. Yeah. Little pockets of pastry. And then back to the freezer to set completely solid. And we've got one we made earlier. Cannot wait for this. So the ice cream is frozen and before you try and serve it and ball it, what you'll need to do is take it out in the freezer 10-15 minutes before you need it, just so it softens. And then with a warm ice cream scoop, ball yourself some ice cream. That is the easiest ice cream I think you'll ever make. Yep, a couple of cheats, but it's well worth it. Now you can serve this ice cream with a few fresh berries mm -hmm. or that last bit of the pastry we saved can just be crumbled over. And of course, it wouldn't be Christmas without a little sprig of mint. Merry Christmas everyone, and that is our mince pie ice cream. Sorted. 
Fruit crumbles are awesome, and we've added some seasonal flavours to go perfectly with this festive time of year. Yeah, and not just in the fruity bit, but on the crumble topping too. We're going to start with the fruit though, so pears. All we need to do is take five pears, peel them, decor them, and chunk them up into thumb-sized pieces. And then we want to start to soften our fruit, so a knob of butter into a warm pan, and all of the fruit can go in as well. We'll toss it and saute it on the hob for three or four minutes before adding in our cranberries. In the meantime, we'll chop up some white chocolate. There we go. All of the butter has helped to soften the pears. Not quite done yet, but now's a good time to add in our extra fruit, the cranberries. So you can use dried cranberries if you like, or frozen cranberries, but personally the fresh ones are better. Back onto the hob for another couple of minutes. In the last minute of the cranberries and pears cooking, I'm also going to add star anise and the juice of a lemon, so it's not too sweet. Now our fruit is partially stewed, so it can all go into our roasting dish or serving dish. And you'll notice at this point we've not added in any sugar. That's just butter, pear, cranberries, <coughs> lemon juice and star anise. Because pears are naturally very sweet. Yep. Which is why we've gone for the cranberries, which are quite sour to kind of compensate. But now for some sweetness. All of your white chocolate going over. Next up, we're going to do the really sweet bit, which is the crumble topping. So two things have to happen simultaneously. One, I'm going to make a crumble in this bowl by rubbing butter into flour, then mixing it with brown sugar and a little bit of cinnamon. And two, I'm going to crush some ginger nut biscuits. Good job there's two of us, isn't it? Handy. Done all right there. You've done a very good job. You don't have to be quite as precise if you don't want to. Rustic is good, it's entirely up to you. It's always a compliment sandwiched between two negatives of you, isn't Christmas it? Christmas can be a little bit rustic. Um, I have a question. Ooh. What is the crumble to fruit ratio in this crumble? Oh, that is a really important question. This is where question. it could go all wrong. Enough for it to be a crumble and enough to cover the fruit underneath, but not so much that you can't see the occasional bit bubbling through. So we're looking at, what, a centimetre of crumble, yeah. would you say? But don't make, and we haven't made our pears too even, so there's quite an uneven mixture of fruit. So when you scatter, it's not completely flat. Are you happy with I was, I was quite happy with the answer. I thought Ben was going to avoid the answer, first I of all. I did, for a second. It, for it second. felt like he was dodging the question. I cornered him into an answer. You did. Now, back to the crumble. We're just going to sprinkle it over the fruit. And kind of sprinkle it from a height, because you want it quite loosely. You don't want it too packed in. Then, finally, I've got some crystallised stem ginger. All I'm going to do is cut some small slices out of this. And those bits will go nice and sticky and caramelised in the oven, Amazing. which we have preheated to 200 degrees Celsius. And this crumble only needs about 15 minutes. Oh, that smells amazing. I think this is one of my new <laughs> favourites. And we're serving ours with finest vanilla custard. That is our pear and cranberry ginger nut crumble sorted. Let's eat them! Dig in, I'm going straight for the job. crumble. My crumble. Oh, that is lovely. You know what would go well? Mince pie ice cream, bit of crumble. If you served all these three at the end of my Christmas dinner... That would be my favourite. I would take a portion of each. Well, we definitely can't work out which one's our favourite. If you've got a favourite, please comment down below. Also, if you think we've missed an amazing Christmas dessert, then please comment your suggestions down below also. But if you actually want to give these ones a go, all the details and full recipes can also be found down below. And please subscribe. It really helps. It would be a nice Christmas we'll present for yeah, us. We would enjoy it. I like this one. And that one. With a scoop of that. Yeah.